built the new project because yours was broken. And then he's like, no, no, no. So I pulled out the Git blame, <laughs> and it's there. And I'm like, okay, well, there you go. So the wonderful thing about this is you can see. I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, developer one, right? They're pushing, you, they can pull the changes that developer two and three have made. Uh, they update their working copy. I'll explain what working copy is in a few slides. So, Git. How many of you guys know the difference between Git and GitHub? GitHub's a website. Okay. So, Git is the version control system, right? And GitHub, well, we'll get to GitHub. So, Git is the version control system. And the way that it works is just like this wonderful image right here. You have your one project, right? You have your repository right here. Let's say this is uh, Joseph. He's working on one of our uh, projects. And he's making changes. So in his computer, in his file system, he has a project called main, which is the name of the repository for the main website for ISD, right? He's making changes to, to, this, uh, to this copy. Now, as he's making changes, he adds them to the staging area, right? Once he adds them to the staging area, he says, okay, well, I think I'm ready. I'm gonna commit these changes because I wanna get them ready to push them to the remote repository. So what he does is he commits them and now they're added to the local repository, which is a copy of what you have remotely, right? With your changes. So once he does that and he's ready to push, when he does git push and whatever other flags you aren't needing for whatever your case is, you push, and it pushes to the remote repository, right? And if you have no issues, you'll, you'll be fine, but sometimes you'll have issues and you'll have to do, a, what's it called, merge conflicts? I have a quick question. When you have it in the staging area, can you um, move from branch to branch, or do you have to commit and or stash before you can do that? I don't know I've been able to move, and there's, there's no problem. I think you have to stage them. Yeah, so she says when you're so in the staging So as long as you stage it first, because yeah. I've, I've mm -hmm. just been doing stash, but. Because one warning that you get is uh, when you're trying to switch and it'll be an issue, it'll tell you, you have, you have unstaged yeah. files. Okay. So you have to stage them, yeah. So yeah, so the, the biggest thing here is that you can push changes to the remote repository from your local repository. You can pull changes, right? I don't think it's any more complicated than that, to be honest, okay? And again, we'll, we'll take this and actually get our hands dirty and actually use Git. Uh, I created a, a blank repository and we're gonna fill it up. So everyone's gonna have a uh, commit to that repository, right? Something like that, a PR at least. So again, Git. Git is an open source version control system. Again, I'm reading this off the screen. I don't remember all of this. Uh, open source version control system, both for software development as well as chip designs. It is available for free and it's uh, distributed for revision control system for tracking changes in source code during software development. Okay. Good question. Can you use Git for other things? Like, for example, you were working on homework and you wanted to keep versions of. If homework. it's a document, yeah. Okay. Right? And if you're able to make changes to it, yes. Okay. So, uh, I know uh, GitHub, for example, is it Git? No, it's Git. Git has a feature. Is it LFS, large file system, large format system? I don't know, point is it handles large files. So you can also use it that way. Did you guys know that, uh, I think it's GitHub that has a limitation of like four gigs? Wait, what? Yeah, they have a limitation of four gigs. For repo or? Yeah, for the file size. And if you want more, you have to pay for it. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what happens after that. But there could be like a thousand file sizes, thousand four gig files in one repo. Because I, I write into that problem trying to push a file, and they're like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Git. Git works with a bunch of different commands. I found this image online, which is kind of subjective. I, I, I don't think this is how you kind of figure where you land on the spectrum if you're advanced or intermediate, but it's somewhat useful. So you can see that Git is just the name of the, uh, the command that you're doing, right? Not the command, the program that you're using, Git. And then you have all these commands like uh, add, clone, init, config. So those are the basics, right? So you have others like push, pull, and so on. Those are all basic. Then you have things like, well, git status I think is basic too because you're just checking the status of your repository. But um, we'll cover a couple of these uh, when we do our demo. 
and you guys can ask a couple of questions, but uh, we'll try to cover the, the most common ones, right? Like get uh, push, pull, uh, creating a branch, checking our branches, checking the status, looking at the log and so on, okay? So these are on the side of advanced. These are not advanced at all. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's pretty, like you guys Yeah, know I've seen scary <laughs> things, and this does not look scary. So, Git checkout, you need to know Git checkout to do anything, so. Yeah. So what does working with Git look like, okay? So we talked about having a working directory, right? So again, let's say you download, uh, you clone a project to your machine. Right, and you go in there from VS Code. So on the left side of VS Code, you have your project directory, right? You can look at that and consider that your working directory, right, because you're working with the files directly. So let's say you modify two, three files, okay? You're ready to, to add that <laughs> to the staging area, so you do git add, and you name the files that you want to add, right? Or you can be lazy like me and do git add dot and adds everything, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Don't do that. Um, so you do git add, and it adds it to the staging area, okay? Now let's say you're ready to add a commit, uh, not add a commit, push it to your local repository locally, right? Because you wanna get that ready to push it to the remote repository. You're like, okay, well I'm sure I want these changes, I'm ready to commit to these changes, we're good. So you do git commit, <laughs> dash m for message, and you put a message, right? Make it a detail, uh, not detailed, well, it's up to you, it's a preference, right? Would you rather go back three months from now and look at updated index, or read something like updated header for metadata, for SEO, whatever, it is, something, right? The more detail you have, the better for you in the future when your future self comes back and looks at past self, they're gonna be disappointed, but they're gonna be you know, informed. Right? They're gonna look at your code and be like, uh, I don't know who wrote this. But they're gonna have an idea of what happened, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, from here you can also do git checkout. So you can check out different uh, branches that you have locally, okay? You can also do git merge. You can merge one branch to another branch. And if there are uh, merge conflicts, it will let you know, and it'll, um, it's a mess. Um, what it does, it'll, it'll try to, it shows you the difference between what is in one branch and what is in the other, and it makes you choose between what version you want to keep, right? It's not pretty when you do it uh, manually, but on, on github.com, it's really pretty. So I like it when it does it on there better, so. That's why I do PRs instead of merging locally. And then once you're ready, right, you have everything in your local repository, and you want to push it remotely, you do git push, and let's say someone else made changes, it'll ask you to do a git pull first, to have those changes locally, right? That's how it avoids having issues, okay? Now, I'm assuming between the local repository and the remote, remote repository, there's a gatekeeper, because I'm, I mean, if you're working with a team, it's not like anybody Right, right, so, so yeah, so one, wonderful question. So depending on the team that you're on, you do have what is called the git master. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not in git, this is like an actual person, right, on your team that is like, uh, no, that's not going into master. So for example, I work, uh, a couple of you guys know Felipe, right? So Felipe works on the front end team and I work on the platform team. I don't even know what they think I do. Um, but I manage the repository for the project that we're working on, right? And what I do is he, will, he creates a branch uh, for a feature that he's working on, uh, he's done with it, so uh, he creates a PR and he's pushing it into uh, the development branch, right? So I take a look at it, make sure everything's okay, uh, but I decide to push it to that branch, right? I have to look at the code, review the code. If there are any issues, I let him know. I leave a message, and I'll show you guys uh, github.com. Uh, I'll leave a message, and then he'll get it. And we'll go back and forth until I'm happy with it, and then we'll push it up the tiers, right? Once we push it into staging, for example, um, that's our, like, our dry run, right? Our uh, deploy, our test deploy. And then once we're good there, we push it to production. Uh, even then, you don't have, well at least corporate level, right? I don't have the power to push to, to master. I'm able to push the branch and everything, 
but then that branch, that code needs to go into the actual server for the website, right? I don't have that power. Someone pushes one little button for Jenkins to run, and they're like, okay, done. And I, they don't let me do that, so. Okay, so GitHub. How many of you guys have used GitHub before? Perfect, okay. So let's just read this for the sake of reading it. So GitHub, uh, it's a web-based Git repository hosting service available at github.com. Yeah, not read, but that's a lot of reading. So pretty much what it is is, it's a, think of it like a, like a hosting service for your repositories, right? A cool thing about Git is that you can host your repositories on your own server. Let's say you, you bought a, a VPS or whatever, and you're hosting your own Git, uh, I don't say Git party, that's not a term. Um, uh, a Git library, right, of all your repositories, all the projects that you're working on, and you don't care if they're uh, public. You're not sharing them with the world, it's just you, right? You can do that. Uh, but let's say you do want to share them with the world and you want to benefit from all the tools that GitHub has and is built, then you use GitHub. All they do is host your repositories. That's all it is. Okay, does, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Okay, perfect. They have wonderful tools. I can't imagine posting my own repository. Uh, but this is what a single uh, repository looks like. Right, you have the name of the repository, uh, the name of the user that owns that repository, code, you have uh, the number of commits for that specific branch. Uh, if you click on this little thing right here, can I zoom in? Uh, but I lose the clicker. Yeah, well, this right here. I'll show you guys uh, during the demo. Um, all the branches are here. Oh, thank you so much. There we go, perfect. So you guys didn't see the last two minutes. That's great. No, just last 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so branches, they're right here. You click on this and it'll show you all the branches, right? Uh, there's other useful features like the number of contributors. Uh, if you go into insights, you can see who uh, is working, I don't say the most, <laughs> but that's what I use it for. Uh, you go on there, you can see the activity, right? Of every member that's contributing to the project. Uh, pull requests, you guys will do that today. So, yeah. So, so what is a pull request? So, I'm gonna have you guys do a fork of a repository today. So that's why I want you guys to have your own account. Uh, when you do a fork, you have your own copy of a repos uh, someone else's repository, right? That's your repository now. You're not cloning it to your local directory, you're copying it to your account. And the way that you normally contribute is, Let's say you fork the main website, you create a new branch because you're gonna work on a new feature, and you're ready to submit that to our copy, right? So you do a pull request. You're requesting for us to pull your copy of the code into our repository, right? I think that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. And it's the same, same case for, let's say we're working on the same repository, and I'm asking for you to pull my branch into this other branch. So. so it's sort of like a freeway on ramp. Yeah, kind of. I find it more useful than straight up merging things through Git, through the terminal. Um, I like visuals more than anything. Uh, I'll show you guys why. Uh, when you do a PR, it, it lets you set messages, descriptions, it lets you track back and forth. If anything happens, there's one little button that just says revert. Uh, that should be renamed to like save my ass. Uh, <laughs> and you click on it and it reverts everything. Like it never happened. So it's, it's wonderful. Well, not like it never happened because it does leave a trail of you did this. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a GitHub desktop. So in case you don't like the terminal and you want like a graphic user interface, uh, we do have this. Um, For Mac? Yeah, for all systems. Okay. Yeah, so this is what they say about GitHub Desktop. It's a fast and easy way to contribute to projects from Windows and OS X. Whether you're a seasoned user or a new user, GitHub Desktop is designed to simplify the process and work for a while using GitHub. GitHub Desktop is an open source, electron-based app. I think that the only cool thing about this application is how it's built. Other than that, I wouldn't advise using this. Um, because then it becomes a crutch. 
right? There are things that you can do a lot faster with the terminal because you're working on the terminal anyways while you're working on your own projects. So having to switch back and forth between that and the desktop version seems kind of silly. Uh, if you really want to use something uh, that's a UI for the sake of its tools, now you're benefiting from it, right? Because it has tools that you don't have on the, on the terminal. Uh, you can use something like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about it, uh, Git Kraken. I heard about it. Told okay, me. well, I'll, I'll make sure to show it to you guys uh, during the demo. But uh, it's very useful for, let's say, when you're trying to differentiate between uh, the different branches on a repository. It, it's pretty, actually. Uh, all the branches are color coded and, and everything. everything. Uh, it separates everything really nice. So I'll make sure to show you guys. We're almost there to the demo. Okay, now. So what's the difference between git and git bash? Anyone know? Git bash is a command line. Okay. Or a command prompt. Okay. Anyone git. else? Too, too many hands. Uh, I need just one hand. Uh, to my knowledge, I might be wrong. It, it's on your computer. Bash is your com it's like built into your computer. Right? Okay. Uh, it's funny how you say I might be wrong. Uh, don't assume I'm right. <laughs> so make sure you double check whatever I say. So Git Bash is an application for Microsoft Windows environments, which provides an emulation layer for a Git command line experience. So a lot of you guys that have Macs, Git comes with it, right? Okay, perfect, lucky you guys. So, no, Bash is an acronym for Born Again Shell. A shell is a terminal application used to interface with an operating system through written commands. So essentially Git Bash is just a combination of Bash along with this thing called uh, New core utils, which includes things like ls, cat, and etc., which lets you use bash shell and other Unix commands on Windows. Before I used git bash, I was using uh, Windows command prompt. I was going to quit programming altogether. <laughs> yeah, I did not like the Windows uh, command prompt, uh, but with git bash, it lets you utilize Unix commands, right, which are much nicer to work with. So, again, you any what bash plus Unix command? I'm sorry. You said it's bash plus Unix command? Yeah, so what Git Bash is, is you can download it if you have like a Windows machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can use it not only for Git, uh, you can use it for anything you want, uh, working with other projects, whatever the case may be. Um, but you can execute Unix commands on Windows. Like let's say you want to look at a directory. You can do ls and it lists all the files in that directory, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's nice, better than using the, in my opinion, better than using the command prompt. Does it really compare to GitHub? So Git, Git Bash? Or is it Apple's and oranges? So Git Bash is just, it comes together with Git and Bash, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not an equivalent to GitHub or Git. You're just able to use Git with it, right? Okay. Yeah, so you should be able to use, um, access uh, GitHub, for example, through the terminal, even if it's not Git Bash, right? So you should be fine. Oh, we're there. Okay, so we all have Git installed? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, we can play. <laughs> let's go ahead. Do our demo. You go ahead. Okay. If you guys see any silly messages, I apologize in advance. For those of you guys following along, on GitHub, we have a repository under our full name, right? So you guys don't have to look for that. Let me put that on Slack. So you have a clicker, a martini, poker chips. Oh. It is actually uh, very true. Okay. So once you guys uh, find the repository, go to the one called GitHub.
once you guys are there. And again, if you guys yeah. need help, make sure to ask for help, right? Please. If you want help, Please. otherwise, Please. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. April. Oh, yeah. Somebody needs help. Oh. Okay. We got this. <laughs> I was like, what? Huh? Tony, you're next. So we can build a robot? Oh, I don't know. Just right here. We're supposed to Okay, so I'll, I'll give you guys two minutes to find the repository and make sure you guys click on fork. Oh, it's on the Slack channel. Yeah, and it's, it's right. that one. Sorry, do I not have to pay attention? Gitbash, is that something we have to download on her computer for her to use? If she doesn't have it, yes. Yeah, so we need to download Git for Gitbash. You want them to fork it? Yeah, the repository. When they get to the page, make sure they, they, they fork it. This is going to take forever. I failed you guys all. Okay, so when you, once you guys get to this page for the repository, you can click on fork. Fork is on the top right. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that for myself. Okay. Anyone having trouble forking? David, you good? Yeah. Um, Larry and I have been following this. No, looking for forks. I'm the only other guy for forks. So <laughs> Let's see. I was going to commit. David. Okay. I'm following the entire time. I don't know what you're Even Kelly. About. Very good job, Kelly. <laughs> Wait, inside. You're right. You're right. I'm going to need to fill off that last Okay. So I want to make sure. So Windows, I'm going to get back. Oh, okay. With, um, Oh, it's finally turned on. So, are we all ready to move on to the next step? Uh, not yet. Or some of us are struggling. Okay. To load the Good question, Lon. So when you build WordPress sites, right? How do you like pass them on to the people you built it for? They don't know much about WordPress. I package it as a theme, which is a theme. And they can just install it. That's it. I've installed it into. And then uh, you just tell them if you want to change or update anything, just uh, pages or something. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's a long conversation we can have. I can write about it. Yeah, I can see how it's like. That's where that's where the link is. Okay, so. How many people forked the repository already? Okay. I accidentally turned on Visual Studio. Yeah. That's Joseph. Hey, I code in C++. So it's like I code in C++? Yeah. <laughs> Visual Studio code don't have that. No. Oh, you code in C++? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said you couldn't C++. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, while we're waiting. For um, Joseph. <laughs> for Joseph. <laughs> Don't forget my name. We can see that we, we have the, the version for ISD, <laughs> yeah. the GitHub repository here. And then I forked the repository, and this is the version on my account, right? So it says my name, name of the repository, and it tells me, you know, forked from, and it's right there. So I can't say I built this, right? 
Wonderful. Now, if I go back to the original one, it doesn't say fork from anywhere, right? This is the original version of this project, okay? Now, the next step after you've forked this repository to your account would be cloning it, right, to your computer. So, super easy. Once you get to the repository on your account, make sure it's your account, okay? Because if it's not your account and you clone it and then you try to push to it, you're gonna get permission denied, okay? Click on clone, big green button right here. We click on it and we copy that URL that it gives us, okay? So we copy it, copy, copy, just in case. And then comes the fun part. Okay. So how many of us are at the cloning stage? Perfect. Okay, so okay. So April's got this. So if you open up Git Bash, you should be at the very most uh, rootmost directory, right? Better question. Do we all see the squ squiggly line? Perfect, okay, so if I do CD desktop, for those of you guys on, on a Mac, uh, go to your desktop, pretty much. So I don't know how to get to your desktop. So Amy probably does. Now, it doesn't really matter where you clone the re repository, it's more about preference. Uh, I normally have a folder where I clone all my projects. Uh, for example, if they're for ISZ, I keep them in a folder called ISC. Otherwise, I have a folder called Git. So, for whatever reason. Okay. So, what I just did was from the root, I, I typed in CD desktop. Okay. So, I went into the desktop directory. Okay. I then typed in mkdir, make directory, right? And I made the directory called demo, okay? Then to go into that directory, I typed in cd demo, okay? So I'm going into that directory. So now if I type in pwd, I can see that I'm in the demo directory, right? Okay, does that make sense so far? Perfect. So now I'm gonna utilize that URL that I got from earlier. I'm gonna type it, type in git clone, and hopefully this works. <coughs> oh, we did it. I did something. Right click. We're doing the GitHub practice repo, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the one that you forked over to her account. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I copied it. Just making sure I copied it. So I'm going to type in git clone. And on uh, Windows, I don't know if it's the same on Mac, but on Windows you do shift insert and it'll paste it for you. Or you can just do like right click paste, up to you. But it's git clone and then the URL to that repository that you got. Okay? And it works for you? Yeah. It's command V. Aww. I can't push. Whatever. Probably did control shift if you're running scan. I don't know. I did shift insert all the time. I control shift plus I. And control shift no. P. <laughs> control shift pay attention. So perfect. So I did git clone and then the URL to that git repository, right? And then you can see it does what happened. <laughs> you can see it does all that magic, right? So now you're officially a developer, right? Perfect. <coughs> so if you do something like ls. You can see that the repository now lives on your machine, right? That's the working directory. So let's go into that project, okay? So how do we do that? Ah, oh, I just deleted it. Okay. For those of you guys that are not very much uh, experienced with, with the terminal and you're lazy, uh, got a lot of good tips for you guys. So I start typing in the name of the directory I want, and then I press tab, right? And if it finds it, it'll just populate it for you. Otherwise, it'll give you like what's in the directory, okay? So now I press enter, and I'm inside the directory, okay? 
You guys notice that it says master now on the right end, okay? That's the name of the branch I'm on. So by default, I'm on master, right? Perfect. I didn't see a lot of, oh, okay. Oh, perfect, thank you, thank you. How do you make a branch? Too. Sorry? How do you make a branch? Here we go. So, we're gonna make a branch, right? Now, let's copy the master branch because we're gonna work on an awesome feature, right? So, let's do git, check out. We're gonna pass the flag, the B flag. And let's call this, whatever your name is, call that the new branch, right? What does my name mean? That's the flag for copy. I believe so. You should probably Google it. For copy? You should probably Google it. Because I think you know. Why did you put master? Go, oh, because I'm copying from master. I could just probably not. Okay, I was going to say, isn't that It'll be fine, yeah. Okay. But. You're being explicit. Explicit, yes. Should I get use of my remote or something like that? Don't make it complicated. <laughs> just, just listen. I've been, I've been listening, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. What step are you on right now? To figure out where you are. <laughs> Tony, I need your help. <laughs> okay, so on this step, we're doing git checkout dash b. Okay, this will allow me to copy to make a copy of a repository. I'm not going to get the first name that we're passing right here is the name of the new branch. Okay. The next, yeah. you can look at these like parameters, variables, whatever you want, right? And then the next one is, what am I making this copy from? Okay, like April mentioned, if I leave it blank, it'll pull it from the branch I'm on right now. Right now I'm on master, okay? But for the sake of clarity, I'll put master on there, okay? So once I press enter, there's gonna be a new branch. Are we ready for this? Perfect. Okay, you guys saw that? Magic, right? Okay. Don't laugh at this, it's exciting. Okay, so we're on a new branch called my name, right? How do you guys pronounce this? Alone? Alone. We were friends. Okay. So, ignoring that uh, horrible pronunciation, if we look at git branch, Okay, it shows me the branches I have in my project, right? So how do you think we can switch over to master again? Check out again. Perfect. So we do git check out and the name of the branch, right? So you can see I'm on master again. Okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to mine. Oh, it's called my own name. Okay, now I'm on that branch again. Okay. So I want to see what files are on there. So what I want everyone to do is the following. Um, let me think about this real quick. So you're gonna make your own file, right? And you're gonna fill this file with whatever you did for Thanksgiving, okay? So you guys can watch me do it real quick and then you guys do it as well, okay? So let's call it, I'll call mine my name so it's easier. And it'll be a text file, okay? So you guys can see that I'm doing touch I'm naming the file my name, Joan, dot text. It'll be a text file, right? Perfect. Actually, just go back up like this. Let me go back. Okay. So here, I made the file, right? I don't know why they call it touch, to be honest. Makes no sense to me, but there must be a good reason. So I named it my, my first name and then the extension for a text file, right? So once you do okay. this, you should have a new file in that directory called your first name dot text. Okay. Now if you do nano, hopefully you have nano installed. Okay. Nano, and you pass it the name of a file, it'll open that file and you can edit it. Okay. Is everyone there or? April, you're looking at me like. We're still doing Git for Windows, man. That's taking a long time. Oh, it's time. downloading? Oh, it's the internet. That's horrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So when you have a couple branches and you do the checkout, that seemed kind of scary, but I think all you're doing is switching pointers to... Yeah, that's all. You're switching between branches. And these branches are, are local on your machine. So you still haven't pushed anything up. So Until you say git push remote name. You'll see. You'll see. Come down. I'll go. I'm trying. Okay, so let me go back. 
and I'm going to edit my file. Okay, so nano, name of the file, uh, and what I did for Thanksgiving. I should be using this. Okay, that now that's all I did. Sleep. So I'm going to do control O. Oh, I pressed a lot of buttons there, sorry. <laughs> control C should save, control X gets me out. Okay, but I have the habit of doing control O, press and enter, then pressing all the buttons so we can see in the next. So if I reason. said get nano, would that work? So again. If you're in a command prompt. I'm sorry? If you're in a command prompt, control like C? get bash. No. It won't work? Get bash. Do get bash. I don't know nothing about command prompt. Wait. Burn it. No. Burn it. It's, it's sacred. It's old school. No, it's not. So let the let's say I'm editing out. the file again. I press control C. Saves it, control X to exit. It's gonna ask you to wanna to save the modified buffer. Yes, and then enter, bam, done, okay? Or, you could have been using your favorite editor, hopefully not Adam. <laughs> I'm gonna use Adam just to spite right? you. I know, right? You're That's like, great. He just made a done deal. <laughs> yep. I'm just gonna stick with Adam. And that's sublime text, right? Yeah, it is sublime. <laughs> so, I don't use sublime text for for work. Uh, I use it for like. Uh, Good question. How do you uninitialize text? a repository? Do you know what to work out of here? Okay. Yes, yeah, because I, I know why it was trying to commit all of my files. From my There's no reason why you should have to do it that way. Oh. It's on my desktop, but I can't. Uh, the Visual Studio Code, I guess. My so next thing initialized my desktop folder. Okay. So if I so I just made changes with Sublime. If I go back in there and look at these uh, at this file, we can see that my changes are there, right? So let's get out. Now, has everyone made their their, their files? Perfect. So you guys are still working on it, right? I got you, man. Okay. Perfect. Yes, that's not yet. Yeah. Okay. David? Yes. Have we made a file? Don't lie to me, David. I know you're on Fortnite. I thought it was like, <laughs> did you make a file? And I touched the screen already. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at you. Oh. <laughs> no, I yeah. Oh, okay, okay. The, yeah. You made your file? Yeah, you made your file. That's your. Yeah. It's our, that's your it's our, that, it's the repo's already in your profile. So now you can go. Oh, you're using a link. Oh, you copy it. 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 Sorry, so, as long as you yeah. click, uh, yeah. Oh, permission issues? Yeah. yeah. Now you go to your code editor Sorry. or to Bash, my Okay. That's Bash. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you guys another minute before I show you more yes. magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where are you right now? Do. Just type in desktop or two containers desktop. Two containers. I've noticed about that. Uh, yeah. Is that? I like to use nano because I'm like there see. are ways you can do that <laughs> where they don't cause any problems. Right. Yes. For example, when you're working on a project, you could initialize it and then set the uh, remote origin and everything. Why? Right. When I can just go on github.com, click on the repository, and then close, and then drop all my files in there. I'm done. Oh, so the pseudo help right? Yeah. Just do that. That was great. So, what kind of Up to you. Whatever you want to learn how to do. Oh, yes. Let me know. So you see the folders first. Yeah. So the way I do it is I go on github.com, make the github clone, and then drop my files in there. Yeah, but this way you can avoid it initializing random. Yep. Well, I'm having to do all that. Yeah, oh, put it in your pants. Work, whatever. Yeah. Much easier. Okay. Oh. Yeah, are we good? Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, what? Oh, what part are you on? Yeah, you got to set up this um, password. Trying, yeah. trying to find out what's desktop name for Max. Oh, it doesn't have to be on desktop. They can go wherever oh, you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just find it easy to put it on the desktop. No, 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 no,
I can give you the commands to format your hard drive. Uh-huh. Let me Google. I feel like you should run that on your computer. Oh, on this one? Yeah. No. I'd probably do it just yeah, like test it. Good luck, computer. I go back to service desk. What happened? It's gonna be hot and messed up. I miss it real bad. <laughs> Is with PWD, okay. you, you see it on this desk. Okay, so does everyone have their uh, deep text file? On MK dir. Yes. Make oh, direct so directory. Okay. We'll name this. Okay, perfect. Test. Feels good. Uh, catching up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's bad. Yeah. But yeah. you still. Yeah. Where from this PWD? Let me help. Let's just Says CD change directory, CD <laughs> test. Yeah, I'm really trying to get this GitHub thing down. It takes a lot. Oh. Right, exactly. Right here, how to do it. So Git Checkout is used to make new branches. Mm -hmm. Git Checkout is a B flight, and then you give it the name of the new branch, so which the name of the branch you're copying off for. No, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you just uh, go to Pine64, uh, Pine and you just start to check. You don't know what uh, that does. Your second gen. This uh, should work. All along the case with a 14 inch running uh, uh, single. Uh, you, know, you know, like an ARM process, $199. Okay, so that's create and check out cool. I mean, it's, you know, you can't, yeah. you know, it's like a raspberry Wait, and there's an uppercase feed? Right. I mean, it's a laptop this big and it has and a cereal in it. And check out the network guys. So, if you put an uppercase feed. It's a cereal, you know, that, you know, cereal for a chain. Yeah. It's $199. So, we have all well, the knowledge. Are you just using it as like a terminal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think it's a super light. It's like a Mac, but it's, you know. Light, you know, I'm not dragging any pound. <laughs> 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 it's really comfortable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. they just started shipping. It's a lot easier than, than uh, a pine book. Working yeah. with yeah. the GUI yeah. version it's of it. These, it looks like it runs like a pine These, right? Yes. Well, that's yeah. the, uh, the, the chips. Oh, okay. You don't have it? I'm waiting for it to download. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. You get Yes? Okay. Oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll give you your own lesson. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good. And while we're waiting, can I ask a question? Okay, yeah, so I'm trying to do more object oriented programming uh, with JavaScript. So uh, I want to redo my game Pong, but I want to take all my procedural functions and convert them into functions. Can you install into no, it's strictly possible. I mean, I know oh, everything I know. JavaScript is an object, but I want it to be more fast about it than it is without people. The open source. So you, you can have an object for each um, major function. Right? Supposedly, you can select the one for the player to a hack, right? It's like an object to set up top, but it's always in the hell, it's just position, like no, it's all the Linux, time frame, whatever it is. And then I just want to so uh, think about it that way. Yeah. Okay. Break it down into components. Actually, any yeah. 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 to be together. Met yeah. 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 And he's like a friend. So what do we do? So you brought it in. It's a smart Just put a hard drive. Mark's now $160. MacBook Pro. It's an RV. It has a RAM. <laughs> I made an SSD land around the Diva. I just did the SSD land. Yeah. Um, Power. That's, right. and that's the last model that you put for the RAM. So. Yeah, I got the RAM processor. It's got Ethernet. Oh, the 2012? Yeah. Yeah. $160. That's a good. That's a great deal. Visual Studio Code takes so much space. I mean, Visual Studio. <coughs> that water went the wrong way. Very close to getting that 16 inch MacBook. Oh, yeah. Very close. Have you seen one yet? Oh yeah, I, I played with it over the Victoria Gardens Apple oh, Store. I got Did you stop oh, your so live stream? Yeah, I live right there. I, said, I think I did a 16 inch. I didn't oh, do anything. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
They will, will they take your firstborn? Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's actually like your soul and then your firstborn. Yeah, because I'd like to get rid of my firstborn. Yeah. <laughs> first two, he costs two, way more than a new MacBook. <laughs> no, the good thing is the, uh, the exchange of uh, me being a vet, I can go to the exchange. And they have a very good deal going on. 12 months, no interest. Oh, yeah. You can get that MacBook and you'll, you don't have to pay until next year. Oh, nice. So I was like, I was kind of tempted as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when there's zero interest, I get much more interested. If I can use someone else's money for it. So now we're going to keep on the And then I was like, oh, do I want to? And even then, even if the uh, if it goes in, the interest is like 11%. Oh, no, afterwards, oh, not bad. Not just and a so black like, screen. Yeah, pay the bulk of it off. and then Yeah, by that time. Yeah. Done. So, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everyone has their file, right? Let's keep pushing forward. So now I want to see what changes I've, I've made. If I'm happy with these changes, I'll add them to the staging area, right? So let's do so get. So that staging area, um, well, I'll, I'll let you go. Know. Okay. So let's do get status so, going, so we can see what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that it's giving you a message here, right? So on branch, and then your name's gonna be here. Untracked files. Use git at name of file to include it uh, in what will be committed, right? So we have all these files there, okay? On your end, it should be your first name dot text that needs to be added, okay? So how do we do that? It's telling us right there. So we're gonna do git add and then name of the file. Right? So once I press enter, it'll add it to the staging area, right? So let's do get status again. Let's see what's what's going on. So we see that there's a, a, a new green file, right? And it says changes to be committed. Let's say we don't wanna push these files to our local repository, right? We can use uh, git reset head and the name of the file to unstage it, right? So what was the question about staging? Okay, so when we did the git add, that puts it in the staging area. Yes. Okay, yeah. so we, we, we made changes, then we staged it, and we'll go back to some more changes, stage yeah. those, and then we'll... Uh, yeah, ahead. now the next step is the committee. Yeah, the yeah. Committee means that we're pushing it to our local repository, yeah. right? Ready to be pushed off to our remote repository. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so we've added the files, right? So now we're gonna commit this file. What that means is we're gonna add it to our local repository, mm -hmm. right? The local version of this repository, which is on our, our machine, right? So we're gonna do git commit. Is this big enough? No, it's making it bigger. Is that good? Let's try it again. Perfect. We're gonna do git commit, and we're gonna pass it the M flag for message, right? And then make sure that your message is within two double quotes. It won't take single quotes at all. Okay? Control V. Okay? So once you're done with your message, you press enter. What did you name here? So what do you think we should do now? Check our status. Perfect. See what's going on, right? So now we see that that file is gone. It's no longer asking us to add it anywhere, right? So it's committed already. Now let's say we make a change to that file again. What do you think is going to happen? It's a guess, take a guess. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> what what happens if you add it again? No, what, what happens if I make changes to that file again? Wouldn't it make another version of it? It would just make us add it again, right? Yeah. Okay. That is okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and let me move it. So I made changes to the file, right? You guys don't have to do the, the change to the file. But we can see that 
I haven't staged that that change, right? So again, I do git add, name of the file, minus b. Now look at git status, and the change is there, right? It's been staged. Perfect. Now I want to commit this change. So how do we do that? Ubuntu love. Git commit dash m. Thank you. Okay. Another one. Good branch. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. So let me show you guys something real quick. So, you know that message that you guys added for your file when you committed? Hopefully, everyone committed their file, right? So, if you do git log, it shows you a log of your commits, right? So you can see that we have the one I just did, the one I did before that one, and then the original commit, okay? So you should see your commit here, okay? Now to get out of that mode from git log, you press Q, or you break your computer. So you'll get angry at that below. Now, if you wanna see it a bit more uh, cleaner, we need a new branch too. You can do git log and then pass it uh, dash dash one line. And it'll only give you one line pair commit, right? You can also do something like git log, uh, one line, and then graph. And if you have multiple branches, it'll show you how they deviate and everything. Okay? It's not as exciting on this one, it's only three commits, so, yeah. Okay, so are we ready to push this up to our repository? A oh, quick question, so, you know, the, the, uh, the hash of, the, of each one of those commits is there in the front? Yeah. So, you know, let's say that change I just made um, broke something, so I wanted to go back. That would be check out and then put one, did you read that somewhere? That's very smart. No, but I've, I've been afraid. You know, I've got a project, you know, my first project. I started reading up on Git because I. Oh, okay. I just copied. So I've got to this point, and then I'm just afraid to check out you know, previous versions. So I'm not exactly sure what it does. Yeah. Perfect. No, you, you can look at all, all of these as like snapshots of the project. So you can go back to whatever oh, state you check out F6 for the Yes, yeah, so you're able to go back to those specific uh, snapshots. Yeah, and then I can just uh, commit it again and then check out. Yes, uh, but now you're deviating, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so is everyone at this point? Yes. Everyone committed? Okay. Now they're green, they're already in there. So now you do get commit. Let's try it out. Oh no. Okay. Git push origin. And we're gonna set it to minus B. Me. Minus M. So we did git push space. and we typed in origin. And okay, we're setting the origin right there and we're passing it the name of the branch, right? That's all we did. It's to to commit. It's good commit minus m. Yeah, or dash m, whatever we call it. Oh, it's two f. And then make sure you pass it in a, a message. It's two f or is it yeah. commit? For those of you guys that are, are pushing your commit over to the remote repository on your account, it's git push, and then origin, and you can pass it in the name of the branch. I pass in dash u, so it knows by default what branch I want it to go to now. Now, if you go, if you already did get pushed and everything, and you go to your repository, it should have your, your changes on there, okay? If you click under branch, you'll see there's, there's two branches now. There's a master branch and the one you created, okay? So how many of you guys see your branch now? Perfect. 
Well, let me know if you guys need help uh, pushing your committed changes over. Mm. Man, I've been going and opening up the web page and doing upload files and oh, dragging okay. everything over. Yeah, if you use VS Code, it also comes with a bunch of tools as well yeah. to manage all your uh, version control. Okay, for those of you guys that already pushed to the repository, uh, and you're on the repository page now, click where it says branch and go to your branch. Uh, let's do a, a, a new pull request. Again, for those of you guys that are completely new, don't expect all this to stay at all. It takes quite a few times before this is like six. So, yeah, I need to test it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you clicked on create new pull request, it'll give you the option to choose to commit uh, the base repository. So let's leave it there, and let's change the branch. Oh no, that's that's the main one. Uh, for ours, on, on the right side. So the right one is ours. I thought the other one was the left one. So this one is ISDs, and ours is the right one. Okay. We want to make sure we're on the right repository, and now the branch, the one we made. Okay. Now let's add a message. Um, there we go. So you can see that you have the option to add reviewers. So let's say I want someone to look at my code, right? I normally put, uh, where is it, Tony? And he never looks at it. Uh, then I look at assignees, I assign myself. Uh, labels, if your project has uh, labels to keep track of your issues, and PRs, so that's great. Uh, we can call this one a, let's call it invalid, because it's invalid. I'm not gonna sign to any projects. Uh, GitHub, uh, I'll show you guys in a minute, comes with a bunch of tools for project management. Uh, I know we didn't go into too much detail for, Git, uh, for GitHub, the UI. Uh, maybe in the future we can have another talk where we just focus on that, but it comes with a lot of wonderful tools. Okay, so I added a message for this PR request so that when the person maintaining the original repository looks at it, they know what I'm trying to do with this PR, right? What my code is doing. They don't just look at the files and have no idea of what's going on, right? And once I'm ready, I can do create pull request. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Now, if we go to the original repository and refresh, there should be a PR request. Oh, there's a couple of them. Wonderful. Tell it, Kelly, really? It's like, I'm not going to wait for him. Perfect. That's great. Love it. Okay. So we can see all these uh, PR requests, right? Now, let's say I go in there and I look at Kelly's. And I'm like, let me look at the files that were changed. Okay. Let me go back so you guys can yeah, you go to your see that. So this is the PR request from Kelly, right? I click on files uh, changed because I want to see what files were changed, obviously, right? Oh, click on it still. and it shows you that there's a new file called Kelly Text. Yeah. <laughs> she hates, that's great. Eats. But let's say I'm not happy with that change, okay? I go in. You see how I hover over the one? Now I'm gonna leave a message. I don't think so. Uh, let me add a single comment. Okay. Please make sure to review my comments. Okay. You can see that you have three options. You can choose just to comment on the changes for the repository, for the PR request, I mean. You can approve the PR request, or you can request changes. Okay. Most of the time I do this. So now, 
you can see the history within that PR request, right? They did the PR request. I went in there and I made uh, comments. And then I'm like, I don't think so. So they need to go, go back and make those changes, right? And once they do that, it'll show me here the changes that they've made. And then I'm able to merge it, right? But let's say she sent me a message on Teams or something. And she's like, you know what? Uh, I think I spoke to so-and-so and I think this is what they wanted. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. So I can just merge it, okay? Wonderful. Now it's merged. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to merge all these real quick. Wonderful. Thanks, give me an update. That's great. See, it's checking to make sure that there's no conflicts, right? And that's why I had you guys create your own file, right? We're not modifying the readme. Otherwise, we probably have merge conflicts. Really, Tony? Really? It's not kind of sad. It's wonderful. It's the same thing you did. Okay. So they show up and stuff. You guys go ahead and to get bash again let's clear that up now let's do get checkout master okay now let's go ahead and pull all the changes so we, we're gonna do git pull right so we've done git push already actually let's do git fetch so you guys can see the changes first so we're gonna do git fetch. Unless you did git pull, I am so sorry. <laughs> so, git fetch. Oh, I didn't show me anything, what the heck? Mm. Oh, right. Let's see. Yeah. Did I merge it to the right place though? Yeah, it seems like when I go to the, um, the Emma Empire software development, get how all this stuff is done. Well, we go. Can someone tell me why my wonderful magic didn't work? John, when you're setting up Git config, do you, when it says your name, does it have to match your GitHub name? Or does it matter? Isn't it the email that it should be asking for? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it asks for email and name. No, because I, I think it's just your first name. Yeah, so I use my okay. name and my repository is in Google. Okay, so you can just. How about the email? Uh, get to uh, get remote hash beam. Huh? That's it? Yeah. Uh, so that's on your, uh, you have to uh, add the upstream to the upstream to the project or get fetch uh, upstream. Master. Wait, that's a upstream, right? Uh, yeah, you have to add it first here. Uh, oh, for a document. Um, Save the command. Restarting the computer. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Restarting the computer. <laughs> uh, Come on, guys. There's like 20 of us. We can figure it out. Get remote cat upstream and then the URL. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Repeat all of that. Uh, get remote add upstream and then uh, the URL to the original repository. Right there. Oh, 
work. You try yeah. control. No, I, I think uh, shift insert. Yeah, I was gonna say you should try control or command. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I'm sorry? You guys did a push. It tried shift two. Where are you at? No, I think we should decide on another career, guys. Yeah. We failed. <laughs> I think he said get um, fetch upstream. Get fetch upstream. So she did a test. She just did both. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Wonderful. We saved this. So then we can push both, right? You're welcome. Okay, let's do it. Does like, get bash have history just like bash does? Yeah. Oh, no, we're still doing it. Yeah. Oh, uh, get both. Yeah. Uh, push. <coughs> Can't read my mind? Come on. There we go. The one you're on. So that's what I wanted to show you guys before we went to that whole problem. So let's go back and see what you did. Oh, okay. So does Git Bash have history just like that? So type history what you should already do. I don't know, actually. I knocked that on my server. So when it gets here? A lot of commands. That's useful, like on your server. Oh yeah. But I don't. Okay. It's not like that. Well, it's oh, no, it is useful. Yeah. It's real nice when you put a brand new box when you're done. You just, you know, uh, echo. Just, just keep going uh, up, 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 up. Or do that. Yes. What did that do? You type history. Yeah. It'll dump all of the history unless the last time I cleared my image file. Like if I'm gonna build you know, a new box and put a bunch of stuff on it, I'm gonna want you down. So remember how earlier I told you guys about the Git log and it being able to do a graph for you guys? Oh, now it's showing. It's showing all the deviations and everything for the branches. So now you guys can see that it's all colors and everything on the left, right? Yeah, there is. What happened? How do you do that? How do you show like the graph? Oh, you do uh, Git log. And then you don't need the one line. It's just cleaner, but I do uh, dash dash one line, oh. and then dash dash graph. Oh. Oh, you got and it shows you this nice stuff right here. Okay, now this here doesn't look as useful as it, as it could. So let's see. So I uh, get cracking. Get cracking or get cracking? Get cracking, right? Okay. I always ask the same thing, too. Thanks, I'm going to authorize my account. That's great. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. At least the cracking. No, like get cracking. Yeah. No, 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 like start. Get a cracking. Oh, yeah. That's it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I open, so oh, recently, no, open, oh, sorry, it's on my desktop, under demo, get up. Perfect. So, I'll let you compare. Compare this wonderful graph right here with the one with get right. Right? Which one do you find more useful? That one. That one, right? Yeah, it, it does. I mean, if you're used to this one, this one will make sense, definitely, right? Otherwise, this one's nice. So, yeah, that's all it is. So high tech. So shiny. Finally, I got it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, the, the one thing I, I do like is uh, if you hover over the images, it'll tell you like who it is. Right? Kelly. Michael. How do you hear it? Oh, you're okay. It's a file. What happens if there's like 5,000 people? Yeah, sure. Or I think there's a limit. Uh, uh, before I uh, leave you guys, I know I talked about some of the tools that GitHub.com has. Uh, I'll just cover the, the, the project stuff because I think that's the most useful for you guys uh, working by yourselves or whatever the case is. If you go under projects for any repository, any project that you're working on, you can create a project, right? So I'll show you guys one that's already built. But you add a name. How many of you guys are familiar with uh, Kanban? Okay, Carbine? 
Carbine. No. Conban. Conban. It's not what it said. Conban. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you one that's filled out already. Somewhat. So the way that it's supposed to work, it's up to you, right? It's you not like Trello. Uh, the, the way that I normally do it is you have a backlog of uh, issues that you have open that you're going to work on, right? Um, if you're going to work on sprints, that's up to you. But working alone, you kind of get to decide how you're going to do your, your work, right? So let's say I want to work on the modal. So that's committed, right? As soon as I start working on it, I can move it to in progress. Okay. Now, once it's ready for testing, I can move it to ready for testing. Okay. And then either me or my friend's gonna test it, whatever the case is. And then once it's, it's tested and it's successful and everything works, you put it in, complete it. Right? Now, imagine that workflow, but with like 10 people. Okay? That's where it becomes very powerful. Right? Because you have multiple people working on projects on different features. And this thing is tracking all of them. Imagine, you know, a couple of these here, a couple of those there. Yeah, we use it. We use something like Trillo, but we have like wish lists. Yeah. And yeah. At work, we use. For and yeah, you're never gonna see it. <laughs> <laughs> at work, we use this uh, ab abomination called uh, Workfront. Uh, it feels like nobody likes Workfront, but we all use it for some reason. So, but before that, a like lot of our teams uh, utilize the Asana. Oh, okay. and Asana's just really pretty and clean, yeah. and, but it's expensive, so. Yeah, that's the problem, you get priced down. Yeah. But yeah, you guys can see the usefulness of, of this, right? And it's all in the same spot. Like, you don't have to go to like Asana or Troller or something. Um, if it's a simple project, right? right? But if it's a big company and they're already paying for Troller and everything, then by all means, wonderful. So. Okay, so again, this was an introduction to like everything. Any questions? Yeah, that's very good. Otherwise, I took like a long time. So, not even gonna do the math. Yeah, that was good, Ned. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Sorry, Joseph, they clapped. They gotta go. No, what's up, Joseph? Okay, so. <coughs> Okay, so if you're planning a project, right, um, what would be the best way to set up good file structure in GitHub? It depends, because every site is different, right? Yeah. So for example, even when you're working with just React, depending on the framework that you're using, mm -hmm. like let's say you work with Angular, that's one way if you're working with like what we do, Next.js, very different. Mm -hmm. So there's no universal answer I can give you. The only thing I can tell you, Tony, make sure you're listening to this one. Yeah. Uh, if you have like environment environment files where you have like sensitive information, sensitive data, oh. don't commit that to your repository. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen Git Rob? Yeah, you're gonna be Git Rob. So. <laughs> <Get robbed. laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, yeah, other than that, it's really up to you. Wait, so people actually commit like their social? No, not their social, but I mean. For example, let's say uh, in React you have a dot env file, right? And you have your environmental variables. You have variables for production, for staging, for development. Yeah. And these are variables that pertain to database information. Yeah. Right? You put them on GitHub. What do you think is going to happen? Well, <laughs> Someone's going like to go into your database. Yeah. So. Hence the question. I know so no, there's SQL. a free tier, but is there a way? Listen, I don't want to. I want to use GitHub, but I don't want to show it to. Yeah, the free is probably. Yeah. So. Yeah. So with um. Come on, Brain. Work. Um. When uh, what, what was it? Not Facebook. Microsoft. Microsoft purchased uh, GitHub. Right. Um. I believe they now offer unlimited, right? Um. Uh, private repositories 
for developers, but with the limitation of only having like three or five contributors to a private repository. Three. <coughs> three? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Oh, which is fine if you're doing it by yourself. Right, if you're doing it by yourself, you're, you're fine. That's your private repository. So that's what I do for, for mine. Like if there's repositories I don't want future employers or whatever to, to see, if I'm interviewing, I just hide them, make them private. But your contribution to those projects still show up. Yeah. So it's great. Good presentation, George. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Oh, another clap. Oh, my God.